Do jazz and classical music ever meet? Do they ever intersect? You bet. Remember the Swingle Singers and their jazzed up versions of Baroque themes? And think of Duke Ellington's big band jazz version of the Nutcracker Suite. As Duke once said, there are just two kinds of music, good and bad. What he meant by that statement, which might seem glib at first, is be it classical, folk, gospel, or jazz, if it's got a strong melody with meaningful underlying harmonies, it undoubtedly qualifies as a good piece of music. And for an improvising jazz musician, this is paramount. Homer Simpson once jokingly said on one of the Simpson Show episodes, jazz musicians Ah, those guys are just making that stuff up. Exactly right, Homer, and miraculously so. For jazz is essentially endless variations on a theme. It's spontaneous composition. It's the oil applied to the canvas, the written paragraph in the book, but done in real time right here and now. You might know the preceding song as Bobbles, Bangles, and Beads, and you're right. But the theme comes from a classical source, the second string quartet of Alexander Borodin. It's been popularized and jazzified for decades, most notably by trumpeter Jonah Jones. My arrangement started the piece as a buoyant jazz waltz, and in the middle section of the tune, what we call the bridge, it went into a swinging 4-4 feeling. East meets West at its best. From the Mother Goose Suite by French Impressionist composer Maurice Ravel, we're going to play the first movement, Pavan. Ravel composed this originally for two young children who were studying the piano. The suite in five movements is quite accessible to young players, but for a couple of the more difficult movements. This stately opening in the key of A minor is a simple plaintive theme that seems to naturally lend itself to treatment as a jazz ballad. Thank you. 
Every serious piano student has played at least one of Frederick Chopin's nocturnes. They are haunting, melodically rich pieces, usually slow in nature. Here's the Nocturne Opus 9, number 2. It's been given an ingenious treatment by Mr. Owsley. A Caribbean-flavored arrangement utilizing a calypso beat the prevailing feeling is an even or straight eighth note throughout as opposed to a swung eighth note feel. Joy of Man's Desiring, one of Johann Sebastian Bach's hit tunes. If there had been a top 20 hit parade back in Bach's day, this would certainly have been on it. Why? Well, it's got a most memorable, almost universal melody, and it's very short. The initial theme is just nine bars long. The second section 
echoes the first and then introduces new material. I'll first play it as Bach wrote it. Then in the next section, I'll add the double bass to the mix, thicken the harmonies, and make them more modern. Staying within the limited framework of the form, Mr. Owsley and I will then improvise together, playing off of each other's improvised lines. Vivaldi's Autumn, from his Four Seasons, has a simple, repetitive melody. It's infectious. That's one reason the piece has enjoyed such popularity. But in my opinion, the theme is too short. I kept thinking that it needed a second section, a bridge section. So, after playing Vivaldi's opening statement, I then move right to my added bridge material, which makes the piece quite seamless and more complete, I think. In a tip of the hat to Brazilian music, we treat the piece as a samba. Who knew that centuries later, I'd be collaborating with Vivaldi? Debussy's Girl with the Flaxen Hair was originally written for piano. 
It's also often played on the flute or violin or cello. I learned it as a beginning student and was always impressed that it was in one of the so-called hard keys, G flat. Since Debussy wasn't around to restrain me, I transposed it to the key of F and gave the melody to the double bass. After Mr. Owsley plays the opening theme, I pick it up and then we improvise using a slow, sexy Brazilian beat. How I chose that was really suggested by the original melody and the chord progressions themselves. Feels quite natural this way. Perhaps Debussy would have approved. <laughs> When you hear the opening theme of the next piece, you most likely will say, oh yeah, that's Full Moon and Empty Arms, a 1945 popular song first made famous by Frank Sinatra, then Robert Goulet, and then Sarah Vaughan. But it's very definitely based on material from the Russian composer Sergei Rachmaninoff and his Piano Concerto No. 2. Though grandiose and slow in the original, we've turned it into an up-tempo jazz number. The harmonies are straight out of Rachmaninoff, though, and are delicious to improvise upon. Mm -hmm. 